wish Happy New Year. We are now upon the first Sunday of 2022. This is an occasion where it would have been great if all of us uh, could have gathered together in person to give to the Lord the first Sunday with our hearts full of worship uh, collectively as one community. But uh, with our given circumstances, we have reverted to online. Uh, nevertheless, uh, the Lord he receives our praise, and as we worship Him in the places where we are, whether it be at home or in our cars, wherever, we know that He hears our prayers, that He receives our worship, and that He sees His people. And so with that gladness, with that blessing being made known to us, I want to invite you to go before the Lord uh, with a heart full of thanksgiving a heart full of hope and joy. And so if you would join me, uh, let's enter into a time of prayer and let's just go before God at this time as we prepare our hearts in worship. Join me.
everyone. Welcome to Ele Onuri Sunday Worship. Uh, Happy New Year. Uh, it is such a joy and blessing for us to be able to worship together, even if it's not physically together, uh, that we are able to gather together spiritually to worship our Lord and King as one body, as one community. And so I just wanted to welcome all of you today who are joining us online as we worship the Lord. A few announcements as we uh, go into our service. As I mentioned before, number one is just Happy New Year. We pray that your new year would be filled with God's blessings, that it will overflow with His grace and presence, that your prayers will be found answered, and that you know, you'll be found in good health, especially with, you know, all the, in the midst of all that is going on. And so we just lift up you, uh, each of you in prayer uh, and we just wish you the best. So again, Happy uh, New Year 2022. A second announcement is regarding our offering. Uh, there are numerous ways of giving. Uh, since we are not gathering uh, together in person, we want to encourage you to give through the different means available to you and participate in building up the church. The third announcement is regarding our online worship. And so as it was announced uh, via you know, homepage, general chat, and the various communications, uh, for the next two weeks, so today, uh, January 2nd, and next week, January 9th, we will be worshiping online. Uh, the cases of, you know, Omicron, it, it has been uh, drastically rising. And our priority is to ensure that our community is kept safe. And so, again, as much as we miss you, as much as, you know, uh, we miss the fellowship of being able to gather together, I just want to thank you for your understanding. And let's do our part to keep our community safe, to keep our neighbors safe. Uh, nevertheless, do not uh, hold back in worshiping the Lord where you are. Uh, where you are is the worship place. So whether you're home, whether in your car, whatever your worship uh, place might be at this hour, I want to encourage you, let us give to the Lord all that we can and sing to Him a new song. Uh, the fourth announcement is regarding our community luncheon. Uh, as you know, we were due for a Christmas luncheon and that was put on a pause with the given circumstances. Uh, with that luncheon, I know that we had white elephant gifts that we never got exchanged. Uh, I want to encourage you, hold on to your gifts. Sooner or later, we are going to be able to gather together. And you know, white elephant is always fun, even if it's not during Christmas. And so uh, we are hoping that in the next opportune day, uh, in the next opportune time, that we can still have a fellowship event of some sort. And so uh, I, I want to encourage you, hold on to your gifts. And when we meet again, we will go ahead and do an, an exchange then. Uh, regarding that day and detail, go ahead and hold on uh, for further instructions. And in the future, uh, we will go ahead and give you uh, just the further details on that. The last uh, announcement uh, regarding uh, my stepping down. Some of you might be wondering, why is he still here? Uh, well, I'm still here uh, with the uh, recent shutdowns with COVID and uh, just things going online. Uh, the church and I, we have discussed and decided, you know, just a, a few more days uh, for uh, me to stay on. More than anything, I just want to be able to uh, say goodbye to our community in person. Um, and so you'll see me hopefully until the 16th. Um, and hopefully then we'll be, able, uh, we'll be able to gather together to say our goodbyes in person. Uh, but until then, you know, I'm here for you guys. And so if you guys need anything, don't hesitate to reach out to me or to any other pastors on staff. Uh, that's it as far as our announcements go. Please join me now as we go into the Word. 
Today's passage is found in the book of Matthew, chapter 14, verses 22 through 33. Immediately, he made the disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but the boat by this time was a long way from the land, beaten by the waves, for the wind was against them. And in the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them saying, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. And Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took a hold of him, saying to him, O you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is God's word. Amen. As we enter into 2022, I want to share a sermon with you titled, Navigating Through the Storms of Life. Uh, Let me begin by saying, uh, 2021, man, it was a tough year, right? Uh, You know, it had its fair share of blessings and goodness, uh, but it was also riddled with uh, difficult moments and tears. And I'm sure many of us are excited to put 2021 behind us, and we're ready for the new year. We're ready to enter into the new year with renewed hope and anticipation. Uh, And as we enter into the new year, it is my hope that 2022 will be filled with blessings for all of you. You That you'll find prayers answered, that your lives uh, be enriched with more of Christ, His love and His presence. Uh, But as much as this is my hope and prayer for all of us, I also know, and all of us also know, that this year will not be free of its tears either. Just as we have faced hardships and difficulties in our past year, our upcoming year, without a doubt, will have its own set of challenges and trials. That being said, what I want to share with you today is a message of enduring and waiting. And how in the place of enduring and waiting, how God will come through for His people in might and power. How He will continue to be for us, our Redeemer King. And it's my prayer and hope that as we face our set of trials in this upcoming year, that this message of truth will remind you of the God who is greater. The one who is capable of bringing turnaround in our stories. And so to begin, uh, let's get familiar with what's happening in our passage in Matthew chapter 14. So as we read, the disciples were on a boat, right? right? They're crossing over to the Lake of Galilee, uh, but during their voyage, they're met by the storm, right? And it's a, a storm so fierce and so strong that even the disciples, who, are, who many of them are fishermen by trade, they can't navigate around it. And so here is the detail of that in verse 24. It reads, But the boat by this time was a long way from the land, beaten by the waves, for the wind was against them. The passage reads how the waves and the winds were so strong that they couldn't even make it back to land. They have no control of where they're going. They're they're faced with quite the storm and quite the trial. And that being said, here's the greater detail that I want us to consider. Right? These uh, disciples, again, they're seasoned fishermen, right? This means that not only were they skilled navigators, right, skilled sailors, but there were also men who were able to read the weather. Right? Whether it be by the, the color of the skies or maybe by the strength of the winds or the shape of the waves, these men would have been able to predict a storm had there been any forewarning. But seeing how they set for sail and how they rode out, we can assume that this storm, this particular storm that they have uh, faced, this was one that came 
very unexpectedly. It was a storm that suddenly fell upon them. To that end, here's the first point of the sermon that I want to share with you in that trials and storms of life come unexpectedly and ruthlessly. You know, for these men, uh, this storm came without warning. It caught them off guard. And if you read the larger context of the passage, you realize this storm is not just abrupt in the sense of forecasting the weather. It's abrupt in the sense of like just even the scheme of the narrative flow. Here's what I mean by this, right? Right before the storm, what narrative account do we find recorded in the Bible? It's the story of the feeding of the 5,000. Right before this storm, we see a story of miraculous love, an account of God's compassion and mercy for His people. There's a story of goodness right before this storm. Ironically enough, it was right after this wonderful, heart-moving moment that we now find the disciples thrusted into the worst of storms. Church, let me share it again. Trials, the storms in life, they come without warning. And I don't have to tell you twice. We all know of what I'm talking about, right? Difficulties come when we least expect it. They can come in the seasons of apparent blessings. These are the sort of uh, storms that life throws at us, and these are the sort of trials that we get caught in. And brothers and sisters, to that, I don't want to deceive you as to how the new year will be. As much as I want to encourage you of, you know, goodness and blessings, allow me to be candid, there will be trials in your life. This year will come with force. You will face uh, hardships that will be overwhelming. And there will be moments where you will feel defeated and you feel like there is no But here's what I also want to share with you in light of these things. We have no reason to lose hope. We have no reason to fear because our story is written by an author who is more mighty and more powerful than the storms. For the people of God, beyond the great storms and great waves is a greater God who comes with greater power. If you would look with me to verses 25, uh, just verse 25, it reads these words. It says here, And in the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea. Let's look into that verse real quick. In in the, the first prior, it reads, In the fourth watch of the night, Another translation of that uh, phrase uh, in the Bible is uh, translated as shortly before dawn. In other words, we're talking about the darkest hour of the night. When it says the fourth watch of the night, it's talking about the darkest hour of that storm. It reveals how these disciples, they have been battling waves all night. And they're at the peak of it all. Imagine how worn, how weary these men must be. But just when all seems over, just when they're about to throw in the towel, what do we discover in our narrative? The latter of verse 25 reads these words. It says here, And in the fourth watch of the night, He, He came to them, walking on the sea. Who came? Who is this He? Church, We all know who it is. It is none other than Jesus Christ. And in order to reach this boat, Scripture reveals how Jesus walked on water. He traversed through the storm and through the waves, all so that he can bring rescue to the disciples who needed him so. Friends, like how I mentioned earlier, trials will come. It will come unexpectedly and it will come ruthlessly. But during that hour, let us also be clear to remember that along with the trials, that along with the storms, He too will come. Our Redeemer and Savior, Jesus Christ, He too will break through the storms and waves and the wind in order to bring us to rescue. And we know this to be true, not just a a hope, but we know this to be 
fact, because he has done so once already, has he not? In order to rescue us, Jesus crossed the infinite chasm between God and mankind, made his way into our world, took on flesh so that he can take on the cross. And there he bore the greatest pain and suffering. Why? Also that we may be rescued. Brothers and sisters, that very same Jesus Christ, that very same Savior, Redeemer, He has you in His sights when you go through your storms. He looks to you and I with a love and care beyond all measure. Brothers and sisters, this is the God who looks to you when you go through your storms. I want to encourage you, during your times of struggle, look to Him. Won't you look to his nail-pierced hands and be reminded that these are the very same hands that hold on to you when the waves are roaring around you? We have for us indeed a mighty Savior and Redeemer. Do you believe? Tracing back to the story, with that all seems well, right? The storm is there, but also Jesus is here. What more do you need? But we realize that there is a little bit more to the story than just up to this passage. Continuing on, we discover a turn of events uh, that we normally wouldn't expect. Here is verse 26 of our passage. It reads these words. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. The disciples, you know, at the sight of seeing their Savior, instead of saying, hooray, or hosanna, or hallelujah, they instead yell in terror, and they yell out, it is a ghost. You see, uh, these uh, disciples, they were so shaken. They were so shook by this storm, but that they weren't even able to recognize their very own teacher and master. To that end, here's the second point that I want to share with you. Trials and storms can blind us and deafen us. That's the nature of storms in our lives, right? It's only too easy for us to get caught up on the size of the storms in our lives that we lose sight of all else. Our attention, our focus, our heart, it gets caught up on the size of our trouble. And with that, if we're not too careful, what may end up happening is that we get robbed of seeing and hearing truth, of of, of gazing truth. In that moment of tension, here's what ends up happening. The devil will come. He'll sneak his way in and do all that he can to take away our courage and to challenge our faith. He's going to whisper in your ear that things are over for you, that your circumstances are too grave, that whatever is going on, this is going to be your destruction. He's going to, uh, he's going to try to shake you as did the storms. And not only is he going to speak on circumstance, he's going to speak about your sins, that your sins are too deep, that your faults, shortcomings, too great. And he's going to rob of you your hope in the Lord, and make you lose trust in God's deliverance. That's going to be his effort and his endeavor. But church, in that moment, here's how we need to respond. What you're going to realize is that along with all these uh, uh, deceptive voices that you're going to hear, these voices that's going to whisper despair, if you listen closely enough, there is going to be another voice that speaks to us. A voice that we must keenly listen to. It is the voice of the Lord, the voice of truth. If you would look at verse 27 with me, here are these words. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. In the midst of the chaos, in the midst of all that is happening, The voice of the one who commands the seas and commands the oceans. The voice of the one who speaks faithfully and truthfully. He tells us, take heart. It is I. Do not be afraid. 
You see, what we must do when we're facing our storms in life, it is for us to listen to the Lord. And that's the response that we need to make. It's about going to the place of prayer and seeking for His counsel. Rather than letting the circumstances blind us or deafen us or letting the the difficulties speak to our hearts, we must learn to have a sharper ear for the voice of our God. During the times of trial, we must be more earnest, more desperate to hear His voice, to see His face, because it's only in that seeking and yearning that we'll be found and grounded in truth. For these disciples, what was the truth that they needed to see? Were they to listen to the sound of the waves or perhaps the the rain pouring? What they needed to listen to was the truth of God's voice. Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. And that Jesus was there and he had come to their rescue. That was the truth that they needed to hear, that they needed to see. And because that was the voice that they listened to, because that was the truth that they saw, ultimately they were saved from the storm. Brothers and sisters, this uh, dynamic, this formula, it is no different for us today. The promise that Jesus gave to his disciples, it is a promise that stands firm for us as well. Jesus declares us uh, to us this very moment, take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. And only when we're able to abide to that voice, to trust and to depend on that declaration and promise, it is only then that we're going to be able to find true rescue from the storms of our lives. Church, I want to ask you, when troubles come, which voice do you listen to? Are you someone that listens to the true, faithful voice of our God? Or are you someone that heeds attention to the deceiving voices of the storm, to the deceptive voices of the world? Where does your heart lead you? What sound reaches your ear? I want to challenge you with these words. When things get tough, when trials come hard, look to God. Hear His truth. See His truth. It is there that you're going to find rescue and refuge. Amen? Continuing on, I want us to turn to the following verses in verses 28 through 29. The passage reads these words. And Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. Now, I love this segment of scripture. We all know that Peter, he was someone who was far from being the perfect disciple. We know his his faults. We know his uh, shortcomings. But if there's one thing that we can learn from Peter today, it's that he was a man who in the moment of storms knew how to move in faith. And I want you to think about this scenario this way. Uh, If you are one of the disciples, imagine this scene, right? Imagine that you have battled the waves all night long, and now Jesus is standing before you. To that, what would you do? I don't know about you, but if it were for me, the one thing that I wouldn't do is I wouldn't ask Jesus if I can walk on water. I mean, this is such an intriguing, if not irrational, uh, scene that, that, that Peter portrays, isn't it? Who would ask of this kind of request? Who would present this kind of question? But when we look deeper into Peter's heart, we realize there is so much to learn from his actions. You see, Peter, at that moment, he was a man who saw Jesus over all else. What was in Peter's sight? It was not the depth of the ocean. It was not the strength of the waves. His sights were on Jesus. He saw Jesus and yearning for him with all his heart. Peter is then found crying out, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you. On the water. And it's because Peter sought for the Lord as he did that we are able to see him standing above the waves. You see, friends, like Peter, during the times of trials, 
along with listening to the voice of truth, we must yearn for more of Christ. And this is the third point of our sermon today. During the times of trials and storms, yearn for more of Christ. And this is pivotal for us to remember because this is often the last thing that we do, isn't it? Church, how we most often deal with trials is that we think, right? We we calculate, we analyze, we we draft up solutions, and we move only in the probable. We don't like taking risks when there are trials and storms. We try to become our own solution. If not, we try to find solutions all before we seek for God. But as our passage reveals to us, man, there are storms that are just simply beyond us, isn't there? As much as we want to find a solution or as much as as we want to be a solution, there are storms that are just too great. It's just not a viable response when we simply think. What God desires from us and what we must do as the people of faith is like Peter We must move in faith. With Christ in our sights, we must learn to take our steps towards Him. That's the response that we need to make. Now, this is definitely easier said than done. In the moment of trial, every fiber of our mind and body will be telling us, don't get out of the boat. Don't let go of your oar. Look at the storms around you. Settle the situation first. Fix this problem first and after. Once things are calm, then you can have time to go to God. This is going to be the reason and logic that we're going to find in our hearts. But here's what we have to realize. Like Peter, it's only when we get out of the boat and only when we're able to take that leap of faith that we're going to discover ourselves standing above the waves. There is a book by this title, and I thought it was just ingenious. It reads, you can't walk on water if you can't get out of the boat. Brothers and sisters, during the time of trials, I want to challenge you. Won't you move in faith? It's about going to Christ. Even when it seems unreasonable, illogical for us to say, my priority is to go to my Lord. Believing that he is the king who is truly sovereign in your life, It's when we move in faith towards Him that we finally get to stand above the waves. And the God that we go to, He's not just a God that will stand before, you know, without any interaction. He's the God who sees us in our circumstance, the God who has come to our rescue. When we present to Him our circumstances, He is one who will hold us, who will redeem us. So I want to ask you, won't you give to Him your steps, and your ways. Let Him take control and discover that it's when God, when He has a hold of you, that you're going to stand above your trials, above the storms, above the waves. Here's my blessing to you. May we all find ourselves standing above waves in 2022. Amen? We're now at the final passage uh, of our... uh, We're now at the final uh, place of our passage today. If you look at uh, verses 30 through 33 with me, let's read these words. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took a hold of him, saying to him, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. So with everything that I've told you, here is the raw truth. Uh, Even with the conviction for us to be a person of faith, the truth of the matter is uh, there will be times when we're simply going to stumble. You know, we share now in, in in the context of what we need to do, what we should do. Uh, But it's just the reality of life is when storms come, it's incredibly easy for us to fall short, for us to stumble. You know, even for Peter, we see him. We see him boldly step out of the boat, but only a few steps after, we find him sinking. He finds himself sinking. But in that moment, here's what I want you to notice. Our God, our Lord, who is full of mercy and love, 
How does he respond to Peter's lack of faith? Jesus doesn't walk away. He doesn't abandon. He doesn't patronize. He doesn't, even, he doesn't leave Peter to his shortcoming. Instead, as our passage reads in verse 31, Jesus reaches out his hand, takes a hold of Peter, and pulls him up above the, above the waves, above the waters, to stand once again. And I love how Jesus speaks to Peter afterwards. Jesus says to Peter, oh, you have little faith. To these words, I believe there's just so much more than just a, a mere criticism of the size of his faith. I believe it's Jesus saying to his disciple, Peter, you were made for a greater faith. I've called upon you to stand above the waves. Now buckle your faith. Stop doubting and trust in me. I believe these are the intentions of Christ's words as he looked to his beloved disciple. Brothers and sisters, I believe the same message is spoken to us as well. Jesus, he's not here to admonish us in our shortcomings. He's here to be our Ebenezer, our rock of help, to see us stand above the waves, for him to be the foundation upon which, which where we stand. So friends, in the moment of stumbling, when we do fall short, know that you are not bound to that place of failure. Know that there is a Savior who stands with you, extending His hands, ready to lift you up, to hold you tight. The very same hands that bore the nails on the cross so that we may be truly redeemed, those are the same hands that extend out to you today. Church, looking to Christ's hands, if He can rescue us from the grips of sin, How much more is he capable of rescuing us from the storms of life? As I close today, here's my encouragement for all of you. Again, as we enter into 2022, you will face storms in your life. You will face trials. There will be tears. But brothers and sisters, let us remember, there is a Savior who comes for you with a greater power and love. A Savior who will cross the seas who will battle the storms so that he may reach you. A faithful God, who where even in our uh, inadequacy, who will reach out his hand so that he may lift us up. With him, we're in good hands. So throughout this year, this new year, uh, it is my prayer or hope. Uh, may we come to see our great Redeemer come to our rescue. May we celebrate that wonderful truth And may our lives, witnessing the love and mercy of our God, may we bring to Him true worship to the one who is worthy. Blessings to you, church. Please join me now as we uh, enter into a time of prayer. Uh, I want to ask, as we uh, give to the Lord this first Sunday, let's go to Him in, uh, in the place of prayer. And let's just... Go to Him with our thanksgiving and let us ask Him, Lord, uh, 2022 is now upon us. We give you this year. We realize that this year will be full of storms and trials that are too great for me. But Lord, you are one that is greater. You are the Redeemer, Savior, King who is more mighty. So as we depend on you, as I give to you my life, will you lead me by your hand? If you will let these words be your own, let's go to God in the place of prayer. Let's pray together. Oh, Lord God. Thank you. If my heart is overwhelmed and I cannot hear your voice, I cannot see if the storms of life they come and the rudder ahead gets deep. I will lift these hands and faith. I will believe. I remind myself of all that you've done and the life I have because. Love came down and rescued me Love came 
join me now as we uh, pray together. Lord Jesus, we thank you uh, for this new year. Uh, we have no idea of what this year holds for us, but we do know who it is that holds us. Lord, you are the God uh, who is with us. You are the God who is sovereign over our lives because you are the one who holds us in your hands. We realize there is no room for fear, no room for doubt. Lord, there will be times that will be difficult. There will be times that will be trialing. But in that moment, instead of stumbling, instead of falling apart, help us, Lord, to fall into your arms for us to be found in your rest and embrace. We ask that, God, throughout this year, we don't ask merely for an easy year, but whatever life may throw at us, we ask for greater strength. We ask for greater faith so that we may depend on you more and to be able to see you at work in our lives today. So Lord, lead us. You are the great shepherd. We are your sheep. We are ready to follow. May 2022 be the green pastures to which you will lead. Thank you, Father. We pray all these things in hope and anticipation. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. All right, everyone, uh, that's the end of our service today. Again, uh, you know, Happy New Year. Really praying the best for you guys in 2022. Uh, until we meet again, 
uh, please stay safe, uh, stay strong, and just have a blessed year. Have a blessed week. We'll see you next time. Bye.